right, I am in the final stages of putting all of the, this together. Uh, I took the pattern book and on page 42, it has got all of the sections identified, the different blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I went through and just did a sort. I've got Ziploc bags, the big gallon bags with numbers on each one of them for the six sections and I sorted the bags into the six sections and now I'm just going to sit down at the machine and start stitching them together. The easiest way to put these together to make sure that they're going to fit properly is not like a quilt block. You don't want to match up the edges. There is a placement line you can see Maybe you can see it better on this one. There's a placement line for the batting right there. See that where that is? And what you want to do is take a pin and make sure you've got everything straight so these two blocks go together like this. And you want to take your pin and go in that corner of the batting placement line and then find the batting placement line where they meet in that corner on the other piece right there see how they're off hold the pin horizontal because you can't trust your cutting and then when the pin is horizontal put a clip and you want to do that for both ends and in the middle where you might have any joins put this in and if you can't find it you can always come in from this side and then that way you know right where you need to put your pin out and not stick yourself so look at that if I was to match that up it would come out wrong the the batting placement lines are digitized to match up perfectly. So this is the best way to figure out the alignment of these blocks. Otherwise, you're going to struggle with it quite a bit. So once you get your pins horizontal, you don't want them wonky like that. You want them as horizontal as possible. If one of them is acting a little bit bigger than the other, put it on the bottom so that the feed dogs can ease in that excess that looks straight. And this is also how you're going to make sure you don't have any pla uh, placement lines showing on the outside. And then stitch right on top of that batting placement line. If I tried to match these up using the edges of the blocks, it would not work at all. I am keeping this batting tack down and placement line right inside the toe of the foot there so I can see it right on that center line see that's perfect that's exactly what you want it to look like so make marry up the batting lines on the back don't try to make your edges meet because it, it won't work. These are designed to match, okay? That's the secret to getting that to look perfect like that. This is where a clapper really comes in handy, and I do use steam. If you, my, somebody asked me where I got this. My husband made this for me. This is actually a tailor's tool that I had had him make for me for Christmas years ago. So it's where I can get collar points uh, sharp and that type of thing. But it's a nice handle with a clapper. If you don't have a clapper, go raid your grandchildren's play school wooden blocks, okay? These are fabulous because they're untreated wood. There's no chemicals in these so that they're safe for children to put in their mouths or whatever it is they're gonna do. What you're looking for is a piece of untreated wood that will accept the steam and flatten everything out. So look, and you know, you can put your whole hand on that and get some weight and look how nice and flat that is right there. Okay, that's perfect. Another thing you can do when you've got 
like a bulky center seam right here is you can get in between the two top fabrics okay and take your scissors cut two but not through the line so this will lay flat and the seam will lay open you see so wherever you have those junctions sometimes that's a little bit easier than trying to get this to fold backwards because it doesn't want to and if it doesn't want to I'm not gonna force it you know it's kinda like a child if you force it you're probably gonna lose <laughs> So here's one right here. It's nice and bulky. And so I'm just going to cut two and not through that piece of the seam allowance right there. Okay. So see, by cutting right next to where these seams meet, because uh, I'm pressing everything open, and if you cut it, everything just lays nice and flat very very happy okay now when you're putting these together don't forget to nest alright so this one is gonna go here I need to make sure when I'm pinning these together or putting my clips that I've got a really good nest right there so that it doesn't come off when it's sewn you want that to look like a continuous line okay when it's sewn so you don't want it to be like over here or over here you want to make sure that you've got a nice nest right there so like I missed that one right there by a stitch and um, just don't look at it okay to quilt the borders on this I don't think I'm gonna quilt the inner orange border I could but I'll probably if I do anything to it I'll probably just do a wave stitch through here using the sewing machine but I am using the background quilting designs uh, from Kimberbell for this, and I am using the 4x10 design on the outer border. And I'm using the Brother Magnetic Hoop for the Luminaire. It has made it so easy to do this. Um, I'm just doing, I'm on my third pass right now. And what I've done right here, I don't know if you can see the little white mark, that is the top of the stitch pattern I've done. I've done uh, this one down here. Here's one 10 inch pass. Here's another 10 inch pass. This is a 40 inch strip. So of course I have four of them. And what I do is to use the scan function in the Luminaire and you just hit the camera. There's a camera button right there and hit scan and it tells you it's going to scan it and it's going to see that little white mark and that's going to allow me to fairly accurately uh, space the design away from the last pass. I have no show mesh in the hoop and a long piece of batting and I, my, my stabilizer and my batting were both long enough to do this all in one go. Let me get in here to the screen so you can see what I'm doing. So I hope you can see this okay. These outer lines give me, th those are actually batting placement, batting tack down, fabric placement, fabric tack down lines. I'm not gonna stitch any of those. All I'm worried about is the blue and how close it is to that white mark on the screen. So I'm finished with this, so I'm just gonna hit close and I'm going to choose rotate. If you use move, you can only move it around with the uh, toggles. If you hit rotate, you can rotate it, of course, and move it. And it's just easier to do it on that one. I try to align not so much the outside edge, but the inside edge next to the orange. I can see how it needs to rotate a little bit to the left. And I want to make sure that there's no, the blue lines which indicate the stitching are not over on the orange at all. And I'm going to jog it over to the outside maybe two or three times just to make sure. Yeah, so it's all the way. And then I want it higher because I can see the red lines are over that white mark. 
and the red line between these two outer lines is a quarter of an inch. Let me move this down just a little bit. I guess I'm leaving, oh, I don't know, half or three quarters of an inch between passes, and that seems to be okay with the spacing that is already in the design. So this looks fine, it's ready to go. I'm gonna touch okay. I'm gonna go into needle plus minus, and I'm gonna look here in the preview panel, and I'm gonna jump ahead the four stitches for those placement and tack down lines. Now I'm to the design and that's exactly what I want. I'm gonna to touch okay and I'm ready to go. I don't have anything holding it down on the edge because the foot is never gonna pass over the edge of the, the fabric. This is working out great. I'm very happy with it. Okay, and to remove these magnetic hoops, when you put your magnets on, you always want to leave room up in this back corner, one side or the other, so that when you slide the frame out, you can move it over there and then get the foot through that gap, whether it's this corner or this corner. Pull it out like that. You can slide these, uh, like it tells you to leave one of them on and you can slide it down. I'm not really worried about that right now because I'm using the scanning feature and it is difficult to get it to slide with the thickness that I have with the batting and everything that's in here. If it was just stabilizer and stuff, I wouldn't even worry about it. But now I need to make sure I've got enough up here. And what I'm gonna do is just use another piece of stabilizer and um, just give myself enough. Oh, come on. I should have used a rotary cutter. Okay. And just give myself enough to make sure that it's got something to grab onto back here. So see, here's this whole long piece and I'm just gonna lay another layer right over that and then lay the batting down and then lay the fabric down. And if it goes off the top edge a little bit, I don't care, that's fine. And I need to mark the top of my last pass so I can see that in the scan. Okay. And they have little arrows on them. These do, they have little arrows and the arrows go to the inside. Yeah, they don't hold so like this is a puffy applique, it's not going to hold that well on that, but that's okay. We've got other little ones to hold it tight. That's how simple it is to hoop and re-hoop this and make it work. So now I'm going to put it back in the machine and run the scanner again and then move it a little bit and let it stitch out. And I'll continue to do that all the way around the quilt and it's turning out great. I just ran the scanner and you can tell you get pretty good after a while. So there's the white mark and I'm just going to pull this up so that it doesn't, <laughs> it's jumping all over the place. And I'll just uh, close this now and go to rotate and use the jogs and just jog it over a little bit, the buttons. That looks pretty good. It's gonna go off the top a little and I think that that's fine. 
Um, it's actually fairly straight. I might could move it just a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And there. Okay, now I see that none of the stitching is going to touch on the orange and it's going to go off the top a little bit. I'm not real worried about that. I'm going to go ahead though and take, just, in, just to be safe, I'm going to take a little piece of tape. I'm going to tape that top down just right at the quarter, I mean, so that it's just barely covering that. That tape will be captured in the seam allowance probably. But that's fine, or under the binding. Yeah, so tell it okay. And needle plus minus. And I need to jump ahead through all of those placement and tack down stitches to the design right there and that's it.